So when we were in high school, we had somebody uh, come and give us a, a talk who was a prisoner of war in Vietnam, and he had a bunch of colorful tales. Among them was being at the bottom of the pit and uh, having uh, a circle of, of Vietnamese soldiers over him laughing and taking bets as they threw a, a, a either a bow constrictor or a python or some very large snake in the pit with him. Uh, and they were betting on whether or not he would survive or not. And uh, and, and keep in mind, this is what the, these are the the tales that a Vietnam vet told us in in the uh, the high school. So I'm not gonna I'm not. How gonna old back were him you? Up. Seventeen, seventeen. He was talking about this. It was brutal, man. It was like I like, feel like that's like the kind of assembly I would have never got at my school. I feel like by the time that I went to high school, they they had like scratched off that whole have an awesome Vietnam vet come and tell you like like super sweet war stories. No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, of course, the 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 theme of was was not intended to be sweet. In fact, uh, what the. I'll give you the short version, but but this story with the python ends with he feels it starting to wrap around his arm and constrict him, and the one th it's dark, he can't see where the python is, and the one thing he thinks of is, I need to find the head, which means I need to make this thing bite me so I can find the head. So he starts digging in with his fingernails, like on a random section of the body, and he just keeps digging and digging, and then eventually the, the python bites him, and then he finds the head, and then he starts beating the head and biting it, or what, he kills, kills the python. Um, the story ends, and this is at a high school. This is not even an assembly. This is in our history class where he gave this story like four or five times during throughout the, the day, uh, and he talks about how eventually he escaped and ran full blast through the middle of the night until he ran headfirst into like a mango tree and passed out from smacking his head into it, uh, woke up and there are mangoes all around him and he ate and then kept on running. And at some point, like, like this is at a high school story, he gets to a point where this little boy uh, helps him escape and he realizes just before he gets on the river that eventually he got back to, to civilization. He realizes that once they find out what this kid has done, uh, they're going to torture and kill this poor boy. And he uh, uh, grabs, he, he, he does the favor to the child. Okay. This is what he's, this is what he's telling high school students. So anyway, um, I would do that. I would try to make the Python bite me. <laughs> So I can say, oh, good God. God, I'm glad it was the first part of that story, not the last part of that story, that you would not do the favor to your newborn son. <laughs> I, I, yeah, the, the, the end part, and well, I saved him the trouble of a bullet by killing him. It sounds more like I killed the kids so they couldn't tell them which way I went. <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe that was, and maybe, you know, we all tell ourselves stories about why we do the things that we do. But Why, uh, but, we, why we killed that nine-year-old Vietnamese boy in the jungle. Yeah, I have that story. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like... Lots uh, of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you want to hear some? <laughs> I also have some I made up about <laughs> Vietnamese boys that I might want to kill. That is a horrific story. Uh, game over. 